We got a trio today, guys. This is Kevin, Kevin from J Hot Talk. Oh, did we not use his last, last, name? last name? Oh my gosh, look at you two. You guys are just so cute the way you talk at the same time and you're just answering <laughs> each other's questions and finishing each other's sentences. How long have you been potting together? This is adorable. Well, are you for about two months, but there we did it again. But we're bad at talking over each other. We do it very pretty much the entire episode. It makes for a great product. I have the best idea for that. That's introducing a third person. This is going to go great. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love the energy. I have a goal now. My goal is to not talk over as much this episode. I don't care about the quality of the content. Can I control I've, myself? I've never oh, were you cared talking? about the quality of the content. Yeah, I was actually, <laughs> sorry. Floor's You're mine right. now. Um, we've got a fun show plan because... Obviously, off the top, we have to talk about the IARP ruling on the Kansas case, that entire saga finally coming to an end. So Mike and I were kind of shooting the the breeze before the show and we said, are we qualified to speak on this? No. Okay, we need to get someone with a background in law. Who do we know that's a, a, a KU fan and B, one of the best lawyers around? Enter... (laughs) Kevin from Jayhawk Talk. Why would you laugh at that? Uh, well, I'm not a lawyer anymore. I do have a diploma that says I'm a lawyer, uh, but uh, but I appreciate that intro. Uh, yes. You're a practicing lawyer. Yeah, that's correct. I'm not. A no, practice. you have a legal. Once academic. a lawyer, once a lawyer, always a lawyer. In my, I book. have a law degree. I'm taught to think like a lawyer. And when I read all of the, how many pages was that? Like 160 some pages. They were yeah. thorough. It, it's else. extremely actually thorough and transparent. Yeah, near, Wait, nearly you guys 170 both read, pages. You guys read all 170 pages? I mean, no. I I mean, <laughs> some, most of it, some of it. I read, I read quite a bit. Did you? I'm still working my way through it. I'm, I just do what most people do, yeah. which is read the screenshots that other people post to Twitter. That's the most effective way, because then you can have instant takes. Right. It's just, it's just like oh, context. Gonna, yeah, exactly. Just going to boom. I got to comment on that. What that what that says. I got to comment on that right now. Like, I don't have to mm-hmm. do anything. I just you did the work for me. I didn't have to screenshot it. You did. Exactly. So I, I scrolled so through Dan yeah. Wolken's Twitter. He was he was putting all the juicy bits. Oh, out there. man. See, this is why I get upset that Dan blocked me because I can't go in and react. Wait, you haven't anything. seen this? No. I well, mean, yeah, someone sh- shared something. I didn't I haven't seen like the full timeline. He was so mad. He got did on he the press on? conference and he was, you could just tell he was angry. And they're like, Dan Wolken, do you have a question or would you like to ask a question? He's like, yes. Yes. In fact, I would, or something like something absurd. Oh, no. Instead of just asking the question, like any other normal, normal person. And then there was a little bit of a back and forth and he just ended it with like, I don't follow your logic. Do you really? To, yeah. To like, the, this person who's the the chief panel member who's like a a really renowned experienced lawyer uh who also i would imagine has spent years understanding this case in I contributing to the document so i'm like how do these people think they know better than these independent lawyers I'm anyways sorry, wolken you, was pissed have you have you seen dan wolken's work he does think he's better than everyone else. He wrote in, in 2019, Bill Self is a cheater. It's on the record. I'm looking it up now. And Wait, that was his take? He said Bill in, Self is a cheater? I'll pull, it, I'll pull it up. In 2019, when the original notice of allegations came out, uh, here's the headline. Opinion. NCAA's message to Bill Self. You're a cheater and we want you out of college basketball. The lead. This isn't a theory anymore. It's not an empty threat from a U.S. attorney. By the way, we're going to gloss over threats from U.S. attorneys. I don't I don't know that those are generally taken lightly Uh, or a grandiose promise from some stuffed shirt in Indianapolis. Um, Then basically the end of the next paragraph is in no uncertain terms, they have called Kansas coach Bill Self a cheater. Mm. Which he is saying it's what the NCAA said. 
but it's also a, I feel like what he was led to believe, and it was in fact he said it's not a theory; they were allegations that were going to be heard. I don't know. So, are we doing this? this? Is kind of have we even done? Yeah. The intro? Well, this is well. Let's do the intro, but before we do that, this uh, is kind of comments here. This is kind of awkward. This is kind of awkward because, uh, Mike, I didn't tell you this. This is going to be a surprise for the show. But uh, Kevin's not the only special guest that we have on with us today. Guys, welcome on USA Today columnist Dan Wilkin. Dan, hey, come on in. Dan, come on in. <laughs> I, wish. I thought about it. I wish. I'm I not even I, kidding. I, I, I thought about it somewhere. Why don't we call him? Let's. Well, I'll, hey, if you give me his number, I'll call him right now. I'll check it. But before I do that, let's let's do the thing. Let's do the thing that I do. Um, did you have? Did you want to interject there, Mike? Make sure Kansas, like that's legal to record a phone what? call. Without. I'm not in Kansas. It's, it's a two single. Party. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! In Kansas, one party. What about me? Well, I'm, I'm not in Kansas. Kansas. Yeah, I'll so. just tell him he's live. What's the big deal? Yeah, you just have to inform them. You just yeah. have to inform them. And, and he's not live. It's a podcast. So well, like, whatever. Yeah, you know what's yeah. whatever. whatever. Okay. While we figure that out, let's do the thing. Um, we're going to talk about the IARP, their ruling on Kansas, uh, how we feel about it, how we feel about this entire six year long saga. And then we're going to do some fun stuff. We're going to talk about KU football running for a million yards versus UCF. Is yes. there a new big three? In the Big 12, what are the vibe checks around the program heading into the Oklahoma State game? We're going to give out our sick, rich, hot, badass mofo of the week. We got some video submissions to go through. And late night in the fog, man, that was almost a week ago now. It feels like small fries, but we got to talk about that as well. All of that and much, much more. This is Could Be Wrong. And and, and I could be wrong. You guys could look at this. And I I could be wrong on this. I could be wrong. And I could be wrong. I I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong on that. You'd have to ask him. But All right. So today, and we knew this was coming because it started to leak out yesterday. Today, we found out... Uh, the punishments that Kansas is going to be facing based off this six-year-long investigation that started with an FBI press conference. It went to the NCAA. They formed a new body to oversee these things because they basically admitted, hey, we don't know (laughs) what the hell we're doing here. That was the IARP who today handed down the ruling, and tomorrow they will no longer be existent as a program so just a really it was a banner run for the iarp about it instead of going through instead of going through everything in this yeah release today i'm just gonna hit you with to me what is the headline and i want to know if you guys agree that this is the headline candace will be vacating 15 wins and they will be taking down a final four banner That is the extent of their punishments. Oh, yeah. And sorry, three years of probation for the basketball program. That is the extent of the punishment that Kansas received for what we were led to be was going to be a benchmark investigation by the NCAA. That to me is the big headline. What are your guys' headlines from what transpired today? That was the wordiest headline I've ever heard. It's a long headline. That was a long headline. Uh, okay, a well, really long. Headline. Like it went on Candace, forever. If you think about it. <laughs> okay, okay. got to do a headline. Big bold letters. Big bold letters. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. A, I don't have a print background. <laughs> Kansas vacates 15 wins. Colon. Long. <laughs> Getting long as they keep going. They keep going. Removes. Final four banner. Two remove, like two, uh, two remove. They haven't done it yet. Okay. All right, wise ass. Give me your headline. Yeah, Kevin. Bill Self is okay. Bill Self is fine. That's the headline. (laughs) Bill Self survives. Like, look, he he had everything against him. All the, 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 the level one violations of all, of course, the cross the thing. Bill Self's getting fired. Bill Self's a cheater. Bill Self writes into his, uh, his lifetime agreement that if, Shit hits the fan. He's going to be okay. Like all the stuff was Bill Self is in trouble. And guess what? Bill Self, not in trouble. That was the headline to me because they, they they vacate some wins, whatever. And the, the other one was no postseason ban, no prospective problems with the, with the, with the, uh, with the program. Those were the two things I was looking for. I don't care about vacated wins. I just don't. 
They happen. I saw them. We won the games. Like, whatever. Stat nerds may care. I don't care. We saw. I I saw with my own eyes us beat Duke. I saw it. Oh, stat nerds. We stat have nerds. Andy. Kevin's already got his on. Oh boy. We do this I when one, any here. of us brings up a stat or a number. We put That's glasses right. on. Right. It's a good bit. Yeah. Ken Palm SP Plus. It is a good bit. My headline: good Kansas point. avoids major punishment. Oh, yeah. moves on unscathed, basically. Yeah, everything is fine. It doesn't retroactive vacating. I, I, Kansas. W- My belief is that the mood was very positive around uh, Allen Fieldhouse in, in Lawrence, Kansas today, and I, I think they would have taken this ten times out of ten if you had told them one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. This is a this is a good result for Kansas. How do you think Bill Self celebrated? Today, do you think he went and got some iguana dip? Coors Light. <laughs> you kid, is he still eating iguana dip? You know, like in the post? Know. Uh, you know, I know you see a lot of iguana dip, but I don't know if iguana dip's on the menu anymore. It like, might not be iguana dip on top of the chicken breast. Yeah, there that you dude's go. gonna sleep. Yeah. He's gonna be able to sleep a little easier tonight for sure. I I don't have a funny answer. Because, okay, like, so he had to be relieved as hell. Yeah. And that it's interesting to me, the juxtaposition of reactions today, because I feel like most people, most KU fans, are you putting those on? Because I said the word juxtaposition <laughs> yeah. okay. for, for, for audio listeners, year. my glass are, my glasses are on <laughs> juxtaposition. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> Cause I think I know where you're going and I, I think it's a really good point. So most, I think most KU fans would say, this is great, right? No postseason ban. Like you guys said, no scholarship reductions. I think it's what, three over the next three years. So it's kind of a nothing burger. But I did see when they said that KU was taking down the Final Four banner, some people were saying, eh, that's BS. I don't really love that. Meanwhile, the other side of things, which would include basically the rest of the college basketball world, any other fan from any other fan base, and a lot of the national media are sort of rolling their eyes and saying, KU got off light. The NCAA is toothless. The IARP was pointless, et cetera, et cetera. The idea to me that both KU fans and their enemies are both dismayed at the results today tells me that nobody really had any idea what, what was going to happen when this thing began. And now we're sitting here saying, I still really don't know what happened. I, I still really it. don't know how they got to this conclusion or what they thought was going to be the conclusion six years ago when it all began. I think your boy, uh, Pat Forty, had a little bit to do with this, with the way that the initial release came out. The first yeah. thing we heard officially was that Bill Self and the Kansas program is scot-free. Like, essentially, that's what it sounded like, right? So KU Twitter erupts with joy. And that's all we had. We didn't have the document. And then, you know, Norlander or whoever else starts tweeting out, oh, well, actually, you know, they have to vacate some wins. Oh, actually, they have to take down a Final Four banner. Like, if we'd have led with that in the reporting, I don't know if 40 just didn't know. I would suspect he didn't. Uh, then that was, that would, I think, have made the, the, the reaction a little better. But because the initial reverie of like, woohoo, we're off, it's got free, F the NCAA, uh, that was sort of the reaction. And then, and then KU fans caught up like, oh, wait, what? I thought we we're the victim. Oh, wait, I thought, you know, they, they cleared him that we shouldn't have to vacate wins. So there's, I think there was a little bit of that. Didn't help. Well, yeah. Yeah. It definitely didn't. And I think because, because, it's just interesting to me. And I know a lot of KU fans are like going and like checking and refreshing Dan Wilkins feed and Pat Forty's feed. Just be like, Oh, look at these guys. They're so pissed. They're so mad that KU, you know, didn't really get hit with anything. I just find it ironic that the same people who are now railing on the IARP was formed by the NCAA to handle this. They're railing on them because they let KU off easy. Those are the same people who were bagging on the NCAA for years for being toothless. So the NCAA said, okay, then like we've been judge, jury, and executioner forever. Not a really fair system. So you don't think we are fair? 
we're going to hire this team or we're going to form this group to oversee it. And that group was largely made up of lawyers. Lawyers need evidence. So do you just want to go back to the NCAA handing out punishment based off what they think happened? Or is this just about wanting to see Kansas get got? And that's what I think it ultimately is about. Like everyone who's doing the hand wringing today, it's not because you think justice wasn't served. Who justice served to who? Like who did you need to see? Who were the victims of this crime who needed justice today? There weren't any. You just wanted to see Kansas get got because it would be a sensational story. It wasn't. And now you feel like you're clinging on to nothing, which Bruce you are. Weber. Bruce Weber's a victim. <laughs> I got two, two thoughts. I mean, these, a lot of the people who are very upset right now took the notice of allegations as fact. And that was a mistake from the very beginning. I didn't see much independent thought or reporting, frankly, when it came to reading what was actually alleged. Um, and so they've been misled. The public is confused and. It, it, it's the same cycle where there's been overcharging, the media goes crazy, and then years later, the findings don't match what people were told. And if there is a victim here, it's probably Bill Self and Curtis Townsend, to be honest. Like, uh, six, that's you don't a think stretch. So? Let's go. I mean, Keep going. come on. I mean, <sighs> there's serious reputational damage and allegations. And six years of having to deal with this that I think would be pretty miserable. Now, Bill is fine, relatively speaking, but if anyone was harmed, he's probably one of them. Hey, people like well, people, marketing executives at Adidas went to jail. Assistant coaches lost oh, their jobs. I think oh, of a guy oh, like oh. Silvio de Sosa, who <laughs> his college career Silvio. was basically flipped upside down because of this. And Let they me, made it seem like he, his name got dragged through the mud for years during this. And then when the whole thing at the K-State fight happened, I remember there was a columnist at the time, he's not there anymore, for the Kansas City Star, who tweeted out, wow, Kansas has been over backwards to help this kid. I'm not sure the juice is worth the squeeze anymore. To help this kid? They dragged him into this for a bunch of illicit payments, which we all know he had. That kid had absolutely nothing to do with. Like, here's the truth, okay? I think we can all... Even though, yes, Kansas got off great and we can act like Bill Self and Curtis Townsend were victims. The reason oh, why people are pissed I, is because they know they know that those guys broke the rules. Bill Self and Curtis Townsend did break the rules. But the what happened with the IARP was they needed evidence. They needed cold, hard facts to say, boom, smoking gun, you just got got. And now under the NCAA rules, the smoking those text messages, those would have been the smoking gun and he would have got got. But they didn't have that under the IARP. So we all know, like, let's be reasonable here. KT and self probably did break the rules. So I think it's, I just I, calling them victims is like, come no, on, they were playing the game. Let, let me, and under the old system, they would have gotten caught. Let me clarify very quickly. In this one specific case, that's what I was talking about. In the entire federal investigation, if you even want to go into coaches, you know, Patino and Miller got fired in zero sanctions. The, Self and Townsend in some ways got lucky in the story of people that were engaged yesterday. I think Silvio is a great point in the grand scheme. No. And yeah, you're probably right. Like there's a gray area in which people were operating for years. It was known and uh, they weren't really, they weren't really caught. Like they were kind of in the middle of it, but did the, IARP, or were they required to follow the same uh, the same rules that the NCAA uses in investigations, or were they able to kind of just go a rogue and do their own work there? No, they were. Well, so the independent panel, the the people who decided the case, the mm -hmm. five of them, were to decide based on NCAA rules. I think they're going off the rule book and the process set out. Okay. There was another group of lawyers, independent, who came in and reinvestigated everything as well. That's actually part of what took so long. So, yeah, they went off NCAA rules. Yes. Okay. Essentially. Yeah. 
I, I ask only because when we talk about the sort of rule of law versus NCAA, two very different uh, rule books, uh, and the 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 uh, you know subpoenas and things. What what the what's under a a legal framework is different under an NCAA uh, framework. And I was curious a little bit to your point earlier. You said the NCAA would have decided this a lot differently, and oh, yeah. IARP did not. And so I'm, that's why I was asking, are they operate, were they operating under a different framework or were they just willing to let the facts or the, the evidence speak for itself more than say the NCAA in its, in its ivory tower might have different standard of evidence. So different. that's why I'm asking stand uses. I mean, I don't but, think you mean that but sorry. as a standard of evidence. I think you same, mean more. same rules, same rules. Okay. Well, let's use it. Yeah. Okay, so let's use in a specific example, right? Because the, one of the things that a lot of the columnists have been writing about is those text messages between Bill Self and TJ Gasanola, right? Yeah. Like where he's like, it's Bill's, it's Kansas, then everybody else get in line, don't like it, too fucking bad, whatever. I'm paraphrasing here. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right. The yes, only time yes. I've, I've, I've never, when have I ever let you down? The only time was when he, DeAndre Aiden, when he went to Arizona. If the IARP didn't exist and the NCAA was looking at that text message, they would have said, that's it. Okay. It's pretty clear what's going on here. So boom, level one violation. Self would have got hit hard for that. The IARP was looking at it and saying, well, that text message could be interpreted a number of ways. Yeah. And so that is what I think people are clinging to is they're saying, well, under the old rule book, Bill Self would have gotten pinched for this. It's like, so you're, let me get this straight. If, if you don't like this, are you saying that I want to go back you. to the NCAA playing judge, jury, and executioner and handing out punishments however they see fit? Because that's what's going to happen, right? Like now that the IARP is done, if some coach at some school gets popped for an, uh, a recruiting violation, it's back in the NCAA's hands, right? And they're going to do things the way they've done them for the last 70 years, correct? So l- let, me, let me just insert one thing. I think you're all right about this, but we need to pour one out, three cheers for the Bill Self and KU legal team who understood the game, understood the rules of the game, and went pure freaking Johnny Cochran on these does. Like, absolutely... Every single piece, like, let me, let me give you an example. That quote that you were talking about, about DeAndre Ayton and like, I'll get you guys all that stuff. The, the gas Nola exchange, they dismissed it. This is straight from the Vulcan uh, article, by the way, I gave him a click. Uh, I read it. <laughs> so good. Okay. Sorry. He says it dismissed the infamous self gas Nola text exchange, relying largely on self telling them that it was plainly understood as an inside joke. The IARP bought it because, and this is word for word from the report, Gasnola punctuated the end of his text message with LOL, an abbreviation commonly understood to mean laugh out loud. So, like, literally, the the Bill Self legal, this is not Bill Self. This is the lawyer sitting in the room going, all right, how can we... How can we, what are we going to do about this one? This one looks pretty bad, Bill. Like, what do you, what do you got? Uh, well, he said, LOL. I mean, obviously it's a joke. It's a joke. Yes. We're going to go with joke. <laughs> That's exactly what the heck it was. Like, like, so then they write a big old response with, you know, 10 pages that says this is obviously a joke. Here's all the context. My context clues showing it's a joke. It's clearly a joke. And like what they, they did that with every single one, right? Like they did it with every single piece. The NCA would have just burned that document that KU sent them. But instead, the IRP, which is, you know, to your point, looking at it like maybe a couple well, of lawyers would, maybe bought it. They recognized the good, the good legal work is what they did. They're see, like, you know what? That's a good point. And even though I don't believe it, I'm going to credit you for that. That you showed your work. <laughs> I appreciate that. Didn't, didn't TJ, did anyone mention TJ Gastonola testifying that he hit it from Bill Self? Because it would have been reported in that self reported Billy Preston once he found out. Is that included in any article? I haven't seen that. I haven't read every article, but I haven't seen it. Uh, Pat Forty's article said something along the lines of 
KU admitted to wrongdoing, but nothing specific. Well, Again, there were several but. mitigating factors that they listed, and a lot of them were about self-reporting. And self-reporting goes a long ways with the NCA. It always has. Self-imposed uh, penalties have gone a long ways with the NCA. They always have. Like I think the decision last year to do that was a, an important one to to sit Bill Self for four games to that that whole thing when because oh, all yeah. it does is give them the ability to write in this report mitigating factors. Uh, and I mean that's that's helpful. Give them a you, reason. What give them a self imposed is is more. It's a it's a harsher punishment than than they would have delivered for what was found. And that is got to be strategic. Absolutely. You, that's good. You, that's when I get back to the consultants, the attorneys that were involved. Yeah. yeah that's smart. The they understood the NCA. They understood the rules of the game. And they said, we are not admitting to anything. We are not working with the NCAA. We're saying we didn't do a damn thing wrong. We're going to fight this thing for as long as it takes. The answer, that was the right answer. They hired the right people. So where do we go from here? Like in big picture. Done. Do I'm we just go back? To, no, no. I know for Kansas. I mean, like for in the NCAA. Oh. So do we just go back to them being sort of having total control over punishment? NIL, man. Like the, the world looks so different. What are you going to do now? Give them all the money. Legal so bags. Hashtag legal bags. Yeah, legal bags. I'll be the bag man. I can be the bag man. It's legal. I'll just start a collective. Do you donate to NIL? I do. Every month. I have a, I have a, I have a, uh, it comes right out of my bank account. Straight to the, wow. uh, straight to the old That's automatic, uh, automatic withdrawals. Uh, dude, I, I set it up I, and you should too. It's very That's simple. It takes, takes right out of my account, straight to NIL. I'm a bag man. I'm literally a bag man right now. I'm a, ba- I'm a bag man. I did not realize we had the next TJ Gasnola on the pod with us. Yeah. You can do it too. It's very easy. You go to Master Eat NIL, whatever the hell it's called, and they have a literal, you can, you can hit a button, put in your bank information, and boom, boom, boom. Comes out every month. Are there tiers? Are you like, oh, gonna, yeah. are you like a gold level member? I don't know the tier level. I'm not the, the worst tier. But I'm not the highest tier. I'm somewhere in the middle tiers. Middleman. Just yeah, like TJ. Literally. Just like TJ. Middleman. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Vern, why are you puzzled? Why do you have this puzzled look I'm on reading you? About, off. I'm reading about the joke in the decision document. It's just saying that it was missing context and that the joke was explained. It's a joke. And man. that it, it shouldn't have even been involved. It's really, it's really interesting. I, I, I need like time to process it a little more, but it basically so says that it, it was because the Adidas had no ability to establish any loyalty with the student athlete in reference. I don't remember exactly who number four is off the top of my head. Um, because he was attending different apparel events or something. Anyways. It's saying that there wasn't proper context, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this is not, you know, the, this is, the, you're not interested in this, Nick. I am actually, because it's, I want to, I want to parlay that into oh. uh, my first award nomination of the week. I want to nominate somebody for the suck bag loser of the week. And it's a collective award I'll be giving out. Yeah. <laughs> It's not you. No, it's not Dan. It's not Pat Forty. It is any fan of any other <laughs> anywhere on the planet. Because you know what I haven't seen today? I didn't see one tweet from any other fan base saying, you know what? Good for Kansas. Way to stick it to the man. All of a sudden, we got a bunch of people out there rooting for the NCAA. Oh, Wow. Way to take the high. You're rooting for the NCAA. Don't lie. You're petty. And you wanted to see Kansas get pinched for this. You didn't get your way. And you're salty about it. That is why you are a suck bag loser. You know what? Root for the little guy. 
Kansas, in the grand scheme of things, they're a little guy. You know what they just did? They exposed the NCAA for what they are. They are fraudulent. They are toothless. They have absolutely no governing power whatsoever. And Kansas, Bill Self is the only guy who had the courage hmm. to stand up to the big, bad NCAA. And if you can't get behind that, you, my friend, are a suckbag loser. So there's a lot of suckbag losers out there today. <sighs> That's so good. Wow. That's a really I, good. Did, was, was that planned? It was not. I have no rebuttal. No, that's a good take. Sorry to Dan Wolken and Pat Forty, who finished uh, with the silver and the bronze this week. Too easy. Always next week, boys. Always. Yeah, because we could get them any week, you know. Um, Do we want to move on to some fun stuff? Do we want to move on to some college? Also, Uh, yes. Yeah. Also, the, (laughs) the text about the LOL text was oh it's because he was at a different school at the time too all right that doesn't help that doesn't really help i feel like my legal background was really really helpful in this so far if it weren't for you we wouldn't have been able to make sense of this entire situation (laughs) you got hit with a failure to cooperate it looks like because it didn't give a subpoena that it wasn't allowed to give by the SDNY to the NCAA, but it actually told them about it earlier than it was supposed to, and then immediately gave it to them. And so the hearing panel appears to have shot that one down. That's a wild one. If you look a uh, subpoena, they were that that is actually a level one part of lack of institutional control. So like you're not doing yourself any favors, right? By like Throwing nonsense in here. That's crazy. I mean, the, the we can if I'm hey, reading no this one, right. No one's listening to this, right? Like for between the three of us right now, like we're we're okay. Like no one's listening. Oh, it's right just now. us. No, I I didn't really catch right? any of that. You didn't record any of this. I just want to ask you real quick. Like they did it though, right? I mean, obviously. I mean, I mean guys, obviously. There's no one's to this, right? Like, but yeah, that. 100% did it. That's what's so funny about it. It was like the second we realized they were taking this to the IARP or the second we realized that the NCAA was forming the IARP. And the biggest thing I noticed when they formed it was that there will be no appeals process, right? Yeah. That's like it is yeah, final. It's, it's done. And that was not the case with NCAA stuff. So you'd be like, okay, this is going to drag on forever. They'll issue a ruling. There'll be an appeals It's over. And the NCAA can't do anything about it. They can't step in and say, actually, we'll take it from here. No, it's final. And the second that happened, the light bulb kind of goes off in your head and you say, all right, well, they're going to have to prove it. Yeah. It's no longer like, well, these context clues, they're enough. So we all know, right? Because, yeah, you're right, Kevin. It's like, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, no, I, clear. For the record, Everyone the NCAA has known. Yeah. Everyone's they, doing this. Like, it was not, it was not KU. It's just KU was on a, you know. Happy. But that's what I don't get why everyone is so, like, adamant that justice needed to be served against Kansas. I'm like, well, you guys, like, I saw in, um, in Dan Wolken's piece, he said that. The IARP clearly has no idea how college athletics work. Mm. I'm like, do you? Because this is happening everywhere, yet you seem very hell-bent on the fact that Kansas needs to get absolutely clobbered in this. It's like, well, wait a minute. That's a good point. This is happening everywhere. So why are you so upset about it, other than it's just a sensational story? It's, It's been on the record... Dan Wetzel wrote a book about it. There's a gray area. They all knew about it. And then no one ever told them to, to stop. There's no warning here. <laughs> the NCAA was never like, Hey, we know about this, but like we are going to offer guidance on how to deal with shoe companies. So you don't break our rules And these reporters who are like, yeah, we've known. Did you do anything about it? Were you reporting? No. Then how do you, randomly decide at this moment in this time adidas has become a booster it's just it's illogical to punish someone with i think even if like there was a gray area like pretty clearly I, i'm sure 
That's I my feel take. good about that. No, is that a good take? I would agree. Can I do the good take when I when I fire off a take? Sorry, right. because I fired off a bad one earlier. So Kevin, All you right. notice this about Mike. Sometimes he'll give a take, well, there and is. he'll do one of two things. He'll say, "Is that a good is take?" That, is that a or, good? Or, but even better than that is when he says, no, that's a good take. Oh, He'll immediately give an instant good. reaction to his own take. Positive affirmation. Good take? Good take by me. Is that a good take? Hearing? No, it's good stuff. Good take. Hearing, good take. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys want to talk some Kansas football now? Yeah, because Kansas school, is a football like, school. I don't really yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, the basketball stuff's sort of good secondary anyway. Is that a good take? Was that? Yeah, th- yeah that's a good one. Have you uh, watched? Good, that one. They're running Kansas Jayhawks at the, the running, booth. fighting a full Kansas booth. football Jayhawks. We Do you guys could. think it was a part of the install? Do you think it was a part of the game plan that like, hey, we're going to protect Jason Bean and we're going to go out there and rush for a million yards against UCF. And that's how we win this game. I mean, that's kind of what K-State did. I mean, it was we saw that they can't stop the run. So, yeah, I think so. I think that was a piece of it. I don't think that. Good game plan. Good, good game plan, by the way. Which, by the way, like this game, I know we'll we'll get there, but you have to prep as if Case Kansas is going to run the crap out of the ball again, right? Like that's what you that's what you think is coming. And Jason oh. Bean's going to have a play action. He's going to have a play action. Little, I, how many play actions are we going to see from, from Jason Bean where he just launches the ball and overthrows his receiver by six yards? <laughs> Oh, come on. I mean, that, you know, on two or two, he's going to hit one of them. But you yeah, know, two, two. I mean, he's not Tim Tebow. He'll hit a few deep he'll balls. He's got a good deep ball. You know, we don't have the fastest receivers <laughs> in sure. defense of the bean man. Uh, first play, play action or no? Kevin, this is the most important question you'll answer all podcast. I think it's a direct snap to Highshaw. Just gonna oh. motor over somebody, blast it, dude. That was ass. that game. I felt like it was so reminiscent of how KU football has lost so many games over the last fourteen years. Just given up nine yards yeah, of carry. Yeah. It's the most demoralizing way to lose. By the way, yeah. it's like it really is consistently getting to the second and third levels. And it was so awesome to be on the other side of that this time. Yeah, we don't, and it's it's why. KU always was the worst running defense. It's like, well, yeah, because you don't have to throw the, you just hand it off. Why would you throw the ball? Like we weren't all that bad all the time at, at run defense, but just like, well, if we're up by four touchdowns. We're going to run the ball. Like you are just going to keep running it. So yeah, it was, it was fun. You're right. It, it felt like being on the other side. Dude, big picture that win. I feel like, I don't know. UCF may end up just not being very good. I don't and we'll recognize just UCF as a Big 12 member. Like for the no, they're not yet. Like, you need to be here for a couple of years. Uh, it took me like it took me like six years to recognize. I'm about to eat dinner, West Virginia. You're gonna eat dinner on the pod. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, the lack of focus by you sometimes is really troubling. <laughs> I know. I can see when you're texting during the show or you're reading something, and now you're just straight I'm up scooping. walking back into the room with a fork in your mouth. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's me. Our, why would I not be not be me? It's showing in. it. You're showing it. Yeah, I show it all. This is what we do here. Now I don't want to eat. Dude, the, but no, you can eat. It's okay. Just be self conscious about it the entire time. I, I just <laughs> I feel like that win was so like we said last week. It felt like we were doing last season all over again. Hot start out of the gates. JD goes down, and I was like, okay, here we go. Right, you got absolutely whomped by Texas and okay, just going to reel off a couple losses and have to scrape by to get that sixth win. And seeing them do that to UCF was just like, okay, maybe, maybe this year's going to be different. And that's why I think this game against Oklahoma state is so massive. Like the idea that a team you should be like, you should go down to Stillwater and beat Oklahoma state. They got demolished by South Alabama a month ago in Stillwater you should go down there and beat them. I think this game is so massive because if you do, you're playing, I wouldn't say with house money the rest of the season, but like going into a bye week, you lose this game. You're thinking, okay, well now we're going to come back against Oklahoma and then you'll have four games. If you lose that one, just to get that sixth win, you win this week, the conversation just becomes 
how good of a bowl are we going to go to? Yeah. Right. Are you, is this an eight win team? Is this a nine win team? I feel like the, the varying levels of optimism coming off this game are going to be night and day. If you go down there and get this win. Yeah. We are favored by a field goal or somewhere in the hook. Somewhere three and three, three and a half somewhere in there. Uh, hasn't moved kind of where it came out. And uh, so that's interesting. And I, I look I at this game the exact same way. There's more writing on this one than, than, I mean, people said that about the Texas game. I didn't feel that way about the Texas game. I don't know about you guys. Like I didn't have any expectations that we were going to win that game. Uh, and no. the BYU game kind of the same way. Like we're still trying to figure out what we are central Florida. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, th- I thought we were, you know, even though we were underdogs, which I didn't ever quite understand uh, that one, you know, it felt like, like it's still sort of a measuring game. Well, now we've got to the point where, okay, now it's real. Now it's sort of, it's like that moment you felt it maybe a little last year, but I really remembered it, you know, back in the orange bowl run where you hold on, hold on. Like, I want to get, I want to guess. Oh, Nick is so pissed. I just cut you off. I want to guess what. Was rude. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Look at him. Kevin's about to walk off. I'm out of here. I'm out. I'm you out. were rolling. I'm out. sorry. It reminds me moment in the Orange Bowl. What was run. the moment for you? Tell me your moment. Everyone had a different no, moment. No, go ahead. F- floor is yours, Scoops, man. You, pl- I've had t- it. You've been recognized okay. by, the, by the chair. Go ahead. <laughs> your point of order is recognized. College Station. I was just thinking about this. I was excited. College Station for me. That's a good one. Yep. Is that okay. is that what you were going to say? Or you were going to say at Oki State? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where Those I was going. At Oakley, oh. at Oakley State is, is one of them, and that's where we're headed. It's a better story uh, for what I was trying to say. And the, the, my point, though, is everyone has maybe a different moment where you go, oh, this is actually a thing. This is a thing now. And you keep waiting like, okay, no, it's not. Like, the shoe's going to drop. Like, this is not really going to happen. But then they keep winning this one to me is the point where i think you'll find out who's thinking that way and who's kind of like yeah it's, it'll be about like last year we, we might win seven we win this game it changes i think a lot about the rest of the season for everybody and i think there's a chance jd comes back at some point probably not for this game but after that and again sort of re-ups the the vision of what this could be Speaking of JD, have you guys seen this on Twitter? And I'm not going to try and act like it's a huge thing, but I have seen over the last couple of weeks, seen multiple people not outright saying it, but perhaps suggesting that like maybe Jason Bean is better than Jalen Daniels. Again, I'm not calling anybody out, but I, I don't, I, cause I don't even remember who said this, but somebody had like, uh, it was a comparison of like the level of opponents that each of them have beaten the last two years. And like Jason beans numbers are higher. Like most of his wins are against better teams, almost like not quite going as far to suggest that he might be better, but sort of just like a soft launch of, are we sure he's not the guy I just, can we just put a kibosh on that? Like immediately the assertion that Jason Bean could be a better option at quarterback or either one of you guys willing to go there. What? Kevin's lips are so pursed right now, which makes me think he's about to go there. Did you I don't just want, ask I don't that question? Want, yeah, there's no question at, at all for me. I think it's all more like Twitter nonsense, but my, I did see the, uh, the meme with like the astronaut who's got the gun. It's like, <laughs> it's Jason Bean. And the other one's like, it was always Jason Bean. It's always Jason uh, Bean. <laughs> So no, that's good. Kind of <laughs> uh, but no, I, I mean, I think it depends on the era of KU football that we're in. And in this era, no freaking way. There might have been a time where we just needed a really fast quarterback who could somehow like do something that would run and they'd put a game plan around that and that's it. We are multiple now. We have a, a coach who can actually do something with a quarterback who can create and who can throw and who can make good decisions more than anything, I think is that that's the thing that the two are separated by. 
He's not a, he's not the most athletic guy on the team, JD. He's not the fastest guy on the team. He's not like he's not the most physically talented guy. But up here, he's got it. And he's got that Mahomes like wiggle to him where he just can anticipate. You know, he's not the fastest guy. Mahomes is not fast, but he just finds a way to oh, extend the play and take first downs. Like he just is like it's just it's slippery, he's slippery. And JD has that gene in him, and that is not in anywhere in Jason Bean's like skill set. It's just not. He is a very, very fast north south guy who does not know how to extend plays. He is terrified to extend plays. And I think it's even and I'm sure he's being instructed to this. Like, don't get hit. I'm sure he's being right that. now. Yeah. Hundred percent. But it's frustrating to watch. JD can't like you you could tell him, JD, don't get hit. He it will not will, does not comprehend. Like he will just he'll extend a play, he'll do his thing. That's just how he is. That's how he's built. He's a hell of a quarterback. Uh, I, I would like to uh I would like to put somebody on fraud watch mm. this oh. week, guys. Um wee woo, wee woo. after the win, KU is ranked twenty third in the country. Two weeks ago they were ranked twenty fourth in the country. So who I am putting on fraud watch this week is the AP voters. KU after the BYU game was ranked 24th. They lose to a top three team in the country and they dropped 11 spots. Who who else is losing 11 spots for losing to one of the best teams in America? And then after beating UCF, a team that might not be that good, the voters are like, you know what? They, after all, they are good. Get a grip. We were underdog. Hey, AP voters, get a grip. Stop box score watching and figure out if you think KU is good or not. Don't be willy nilly every single week based off the box score. You know, what? AP voters are on fraud watch. I would put the coaches on fraud watch, but they've been on fraud watch. Everybody knows the coaches don't even fill out the polls yeah, themselves. No. They're certainly not SID watching the games. They're like assistant SID. Why is the coaches poll a thing? Tradition at this point? It's so stupid. It's Dead so man dumb. walking. Uh, my, maybe the voters, they were, they didn't want to dig a hole. You know, some, some people just are wrong and they just keep going and going. Sometimes you tweet about Remy Martin and you just start bringing up other cases, other instances of KU basketball things. And instead they said, Hey, maybe I was wrong about the way we, we did this. And I want to acknowledge that as an AP voter, not, not any other way. They had KU on fraud watch, and then we answered the bill. That's that's all it was. Oh, so fuck them. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good take. Yeah, fuck them. Good take. Fuck them. Take. Good take. Fuck them. Um, Swimming sure. I want to ask both you guys a question. Do you think Kansas is the third best team in the Big Twelve right now? Take your time. I am. I think that. You could say you could say yes and defend that. No, what are you saying? I'm I don't s- care what you could say. <laughs> I don't know what you are going to say. I think say. with Jalen Daniels, they are. I think with Jason Bean, there's arguments. Who would be third if if you don't take Kansas? Well, like I said, there's arguments. There's probably three teams. Who would you take third? With? See, this I mean, is where it gets weird because scheduling. Like West Virginia is a le- like allegedly good, but like I haven't seen allegedly, <laughs> allegedly in the in the in the conversation. <laughs> uh, I mean, K State had a bad week, but before that, they it's were K State. They were doing fine, and all of a sudden, like talk about fraud watch. Like now, K State's on fraud watch. I, oh, I don't official designation don't, of fraud watch. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought that's where you were going with it, Nick, because that's that is the that is. No, no, they are. They're on fraud watch. UCF is on fraud watch. Texas back on fraud watch. They've spent many That's years on fraud watch, and they're back after that loss. Back. Yeah, feels back. right. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I think KU has a just as good argument as anybody's the third team in the Big Twelve, which means they're the number one team in the new Big Twelve. Right. <laughs> I, if you're talking about forget Utah argument, sure, but you got to beat K State. That's it. You have Prove to K State. Prove it. Yeah, that's that's really what this comes down to. Like we are on a slow march to that game. 
Yeah. And yeah. right now we would be favored against K State. Like today, in this day, in that game in, in, at, in Lawrence, K would be game favored. Game day. Game day. Let's make it the game day game. I think K State's on fraud watch, man. I'm going to put game oh, day right. there. Not, not with K State on fraud watch. Oh, I'm actually excited that Kevin's on with us, Mike, Good. because no, Kevin, what we've been doing every single no. episode <laughs> is giving our season long record predictions oh, instead good. of just doing one at the beginning of the season. We adjust Every week. Them <laughs> sure. after each data point. Uh-huh. Um, last week was pretty somber, you know, coming off the loss to Texas. Well, what did you say? I said what seven. We, well, before when it's not about what we said, it's about how we were feeling going into okay. it, going into it. I was saying 10 and two. Wow. Only uh, uh, dream season. Dream season. Only losses are to Texas and Oklahoma. After that, I think I came down to eight and four. I have an announcement to make. Okay. Guys, the dream season's back. It's ten back. And two. It's back. Not, not only not only is 10 and 2 my prediction, it's my expectation. Oh boy. Like I'm going to be disappointed with anything <laughs> less than 10 and 2. I'm setting myself up for failure, but you know what? Yeah. I'm okay with it. I want to hurt again. I'm the wall that has been built up around me for the past 14 years, it has officially been destroyed. Tear that wall down. It's down. 10 and 2 is in the sights, and I'm accepting nothing less. Wow. I mean, uh, I don't have that view, but I love that you do. I love Dude, dream. Dream season. The dream season is back, and it's, it's dreamier back. than ever. It's I'm back. not. It's I, very I'm back. I'm saying that this Oklahoma State game is the point where I think we can start dreaming. So get me through this game, and then I'll. You I'll, have to I'll, make I'll, a record I'll, prediction. No, but yeah, you have to make a record prediction eight, right eight now. Wins. I said eight seven. I said seven to start the season. That's I'm, I'm growing. Eight. So after what you, so they're five and one. So them being five and one has only added an extra win to your prediction. Uh, well, they were five and one last year too. Different. I'm. Uh, I would like. You just started this this oh, whole podcast with like this is the same they just, last year. Like, they just won by thirty. They just won by thirty against a vaunted UCF. No, I don't program. recognize UCF as a Big Twelve team. I've said this all year long. It. I've been consistent on this take from the very very beginning. I, I Mike can can vouch for me. I do not oh, yeah, recognize this. Is we we just played a random. Non-con buy game. We probably gave them a couple million dollars to come here and lose. Like, like <laughs> that's just epitome of brutality. Wait, are, so, are are you not recognizing Cincinnati or Houston either? Mm, no, I recognize them. Just UCF. It's I don't, just I don't, UCF. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't the irony. The irony schools. is that UCF like they had like a two-year span where they lost one game. I don't know. Yeah, and like Triple A. Like what? What I assume UCF is in the the football subdivision MIAA. Do they still have those? I don't know, man. Because I don't. Where UCF that. played, there was no IRP. There was no in the middle. A. In the middle of Florida, like I assume there's a whole league of like Central Florida, like Central State, like Florida Central International, like I just, Florida Atlantic, all, perhaps. They're all just right there playing each other. Like that's how I view Central Florida. I'm not wrong on this, by the way. Evidenced by Kansas beating them by 40 freaking points. I'm not wrong on this. I'm know. not wrong. Like, until they show I need otherwise. Some of Kevin's confidence on takes. Florida that's, Central and that's, is and not and recognized as a Big 12. And, Every time I see their logo on the Big 12 thing, I'm like, what's that one? Why is that there? And saying, by the Florida way, saying Central. I'm not wrong about this is the Kevin equivalent of Mike saying, that's a good take. Florida. That's a good take. You basically just did the mic. Uh, Michael, what is your record prediction? Finally, been waiting. Sorry, nine and, nine and three. <laughs> now I'm done. Is is that the highest it's been all year? Yes, actually, we have a new record. I have a personal record. I'm nine wins. They're favored to win this week, so it's an automatic six wins. And then you're looking for three more out of OU, Iowa State, Texas Tech, Kansas State, and Cincinnati. You can get three wins out of that. You They're can go three, so three and two. Those- for the second straight year, Kansas will clinch bowl eligibility against Oklahoma State with Jason being his quarterback. I'll take that. I mean, I don't know enough to dispute it. They're going to be favored in this game, 
They will not be favored in the next game against Oklahoma. Oh, uh, I have another award to nominate. Ooh. Let me finish this. We're going to be favored in all the rest of the games. Yes, no. <laughs> Don't let him Take finish. It over. Don't let him finish. I'm going to finish. Are we going to be favored in the rest of the games other than Oklahoma? Yes, no. Uh, yeah, or they'll be like pickums. Texas Tech depends on how they do. It's at home. Yeah, but we're going to be ranked like Iowa State points. has won a couple games lately. Yeah. Yeah, KU probably beat. What if KU finishes 12th in the AP poll by the end of the year and they would have been in the college football playoff under the new format? Oh, that is a classic. Like, what suck. is the KU football, like, ver- classic key footballing? And it might be just missing it by one year. I would take, yep. I would take that. Yep. I would take it. Give me that. I would take um, it too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would be all that. I would too. Um, so the other award. award I want to nominate, uh, is the sick rich hustler. I actually have, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> this award is called the sick, rich, hot, badass mofo of the week award. Good. And this week's recipient and the first recipient ever is none other than the secret sauce to KU success this year. Thank you. Sean Snyder. Sean. No, no, no sorry. Do not agree. Sean Snyder. Special teams coordinator. You know, let's just. This is a great take. Trevor Wilson, punt return touchdown. Is he returning that touchdown without Sean Snyder's presence? Who's to say? No. You know, I, I, I don't think you could dispute it. Listen, you think about what he did at Kansas State. Kansas State under Sean Snyder's guidance, 205 and 109. I mean, and remember what K-State was before he showed up. It was one of the worst <laughs> college football programs in America. Sean Snyder is a program builder. He is a program builder. The proof is in the pudding. And I think really the, I think the lesson to be learned here is that nepotism is actually good. Great thing. Sometimes K-State, they let this guy go. And now he is in Lance Leipold's firm grasp. And I'm starting to think now, uh, there was a, a couple of weeks ago, there was a lot of concern about, is Lance Leipold going to leave for Michigan State? Or is I KU going to be able to hold going. on to this guy? Is I he pissed off about going. fan support? Say it. Let him go. <laughs> Let him go. And you know what? He can take Andy with him, too. We yeah. already got a coach in waiting. And he's a guy who should have been the coach in waiting at his last stop. Mm. I love that it. is Sean Snyder. Can I can I workshop the workshop something with you real fast? What yeah, let's hear it. That's what we're doing. Sean, Sean <laughs> Snyder Family Stadium. Just right, right, on, right, on the, right on the right on the new or the new <laughs> Sean Snyder Family Stadium. Just right on top. How do you feel about that? Just workshop. We're just throwing things against the wall. I like it. I like it. Just throwing things against the wall. Any, I like your anyone award. have takes on a uh, good good award? He is a sick, rich, hot, thank you guys. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were doing a headline when you did Sean Snyder Family Stadium, by the way. Uh, so it landed extra hard for me. Bill Snyder been at the last two KU home games. How do we feel about that? I love it. I love, love it. it. It's great. I love it too. I it love just it has too. to hurt a little. It's a little. How many K State games has he been to this year? That we know of, you know, <laughs> what well, if, what if he just stopped showing up to K-State games and it's just in Lawrence every Saturday? <laughs> so funny. Sean. We took your God. He's <laughs> ours. <laughs> do you think, do you think Booth would, would be okay if they just said, Hey, David, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for all the cash. We gotta, we're going to run something by you. Again, we're just workshopping here, too. Um, but we think it'd be a great cool troll job. I don't know if you're into trolling, but we are. Uh, we're going to call it the Sean Snyder Family Stadium. How do you feel about that? Just immediate reaction. Presented by David Booth. Presented Boots. by David Booth. Everyone wins. Everyone, you can still call it the booth. Yeah, everyone wins, except for the guy who donated, like... I don't know. No, he's fifty ever. million dollars. He it's a free troll job. I mean, and we win. Musk yeah. Twitter, it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. It's like literally the same thing, except for we win. You think Sean Snyder taught Trevor Wilson what to do on that punt return? Yes. Like, no, you want to? Yes. 
That was a great. He taught him how to block by Haney. I've never really understood what special teams coaches do, but Here's, clearly they're important. KU didn't have one last year. We didn't have one, and now we do. And it was bad last year, and it's good this year. They make Apparently field goals. It matters. They punt the ball. It goes, you know, a, a distance. We catch the ball. We run with the ball. Like it's we, Here's we a, tackle. Do you Here's know? Something do you I guys know what positions Sean Snyder played in college? Well, you're breaking up. I couldn't guess. You. Do you know what position Sean Snyder played in college? Long snapper. <laughs> do you? Is that a guess or do you? Actually I have no know idea. That? Yeah, I don't he, know. It's not true. Uh, he was a punter. He was a punter for Kansas State. This is perfect. Yes, of course he did. He taught he taught him everything he knows. Over Kansas, six thousand punting yards in his career, guys. I actually didn't know. Kansas that. has a decided decided schematic advantage in special teams. Yes, that is. That. Uh, this is good. <clears throat> Could not agree more. That's our coach. I um. Uh, can we get to uh, Can we get to the show at all segment? Where we uh, get to some video submissions? Yes. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Let me uh, share my screen. This first one, I believe, is a video. Hey, Nick and Mike. Love the show, uh, especially the latest episode and the draft regarding the newcomers in the Bill Self era. I could be wrong, and maybe he doesn't qualify. But I think our guy, Kevin McCuller, definitely deserved to be drafted. Anyway, just wanted to say thanks for all the great work that you guys do. And uh, keep it up. And uh, yep, thanks for passing the time while I'm at work. Rock chalk. I think that is a good take. It, yes. If, if we're saying, if, what does Bill Self think? Then I say, possibly. I don't care what Bill Self thinks. I think it's uh, we care what Kevin if thinks. You think what Twitter thinks? Right. Uh, no, no way. what we no think. Way. Uh, what we think. I think he's on the he's in the top sixteen. So the last pick of the draft was Malik Newman. Mike took Malik Newman I'm, with the final pick. Well, his, so would you put Kevin McCuller ahead of Malik Newman? It's a little Newman? more stained now because we didn't actually see that his run in twenty eighteen because it doesn't exist. right because so he didn't lead Kansas to a final four. Nope. So what did Malik Newman really do at Kansas? You know, a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of nothing. According to the history books. Yeah. I mean, he's probably right in there somewhere. I see what he does this I year. Think, yeah, see I see what he does it's this year. a little year. unwritten. Like if he leads the team this year no. and figures out how to make and it's one year. What are you saying? One year. Oh, oh one yeah. Year? Oh, okay. That was the rule. That was the rule. Okay. I mean, Mc- yeah, it's, it's tough. I don't know if I'm putting him in there. It's tough. Who was number one? It's different because we, dude, we do this all the time where like we judge an individual season based off the success of the team. And last year's team was somewhat forgettable uh, in terms of Bill Self standards. Like, so was Diedrich Lawson's. If Diedrich Lawson had that season on a year where KU was a one seed and went to the final four, we would talk about him so much differently than we do. Also, you gave me shit for picking him. The first pick was Wiggins, I believe. I and then it was Embiid. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You picked uh, Shamey. You picked Shamey hard. Where where did you have I think I just gave you a look. I think I just shot you a look. Like Oh, I knew it, Emmett. I knew Where it did meant. you have KJ Lawson on your list? <laughs> KJ did not make the what? cut, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. I know. Just that um, we've got another one here. This one is just a, uh, it was a text. It was a DM, I believe, that was sent to us. Ooh. Okay. So the DM says, could be wrong, but the dream season of 10 and 2 is still very much in the picture, in my opinion. I think based on what we just saw, if we prep the game plan for Bean and it's not an hour notice... The boys can go out there and put on a show. Yes, we have great receivers and would love to see more balls thrown in the air. But my God, our run game is incredible. 399 yards rushing, five touchdowns. 
I mean, because and all of a sudden McDuffie, right? The third stringers coming in there and ripping off 30 yard runs. I think he had two touchdowns in that game. This, like when I think back to the orange bowl offense, Todd Reesing throwing for like 30, however many touchdowns with Briscoe and Meyer and all those dudes. That was so much, like there was so much fun to watch. This offense is so much different because it is all predicated on like being able to kill teams on the ground. And that two headed monster of Devin Neal and Daniel Highshaw, like might be one of the best backfield duos in the country. Like this is legitimately Devin Neal's top 10 running back in the country. Like I, I'm not even putting any caveats might be, could be, maybe we'll see Devin Neal top 10 running back in the country. It's Daniel Highshaw is probably a top 10 to 15 backup. Like this rushing attack is legit, man. It's not crazy to say that. I mean, Devin Neal could be playing on Sundays and Highshaw just as a, like, I'm just saying like the dude has the, the ability in the new NFL to play a role on a team. There's two, there's two, two different skill sets. Yeah. But this is like the NBA now, man. It's like, you need a running back who can do this skill set well, and you need a running back who can do this skill set well. You don't have to have a five tool player anymore. You get the specialist. Devin Neal had a one handed grab versus UCF that he turned up field for a monster gain. They are dual threat. I don't know which one I like watching more run. Daniel Highshaw vaporized a dude on Saturday. Yeah, just the fact that he's even on a football field after what happened to him last year is just impressive in and of itself. I was just thinking about last year where we don't really talk about his injury and and what it did to the offense because he was running better than Neil at that at the time he got hurt. I don't know that Neil was healthy, but yeah, he Highshaw's still probably just getting comfortable again. That's how it feels. I mean, yeah. That's it. It's There's nothing more to Dude say. Dude went for a buck 30 and two touchdowns. <laughs> really, really good. Legitimately again, it was good. Against Florida Central <laughs> International. And I just don't know <laughs> if we can equate that to any other. I'm just throwing it out there. I want to see. Kevin's it. talking about the UCF game the way that we talked about the Missouri State game to start the year. That, I, they're the same thing. I thought they <laughs> could, could, be same could be wrong. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. I thought they were the same league. All right. Okay. But they beat them by 30. If they're that shitty, then they still, they knew the assignment and they got the job done. Yeah. If they're a bad team, then murder them. And that's what they did. That's great. No, I agree. I completely agree. We're on the same page here. Okay. Um, before we move on and finish with some late night stuff, I think you said what? Three and a half point. Is that the current line three, three and for half the game on Saturday? On yep. yep. Three or three and a half. Are you guys taking KU to cover? Yeah. Yeah. Already did. Same. Oh, already did. Okay. So we're in unison here. KU goes to six and one heading into the bye week. Give Lance Leipold two weeks to prepare for Oklahoma. <sighs> two weeks. Brent Venables. Oh, yeah. No. Good no. luck. Are you familiar with how bye weeks work? <laughs> it's an extra week. Hand up. It's been a long day for Mike. I'm exhausted and I'm hungry. I haven't eaten. That food's getting cold. I have COVID, so I don't know what you guys are complaining about. I'm doing fine. Whoa. Hanging in there. Getting political. Okay. (laughs) I even even took a test. People still have these. Uh, I think I got a few. I think I could probably get a few under the sink somewhere. I don't know. I was like, you know, Um, I'll see what happens. Should we do a live test? Live COVID test on the air. Yeah, do one live on, right the, on the air. air. Do one live on yeah, the air. Yeah, we're not live. Yeah, and show your it's vaccine really card too. Uh, we'll pull out your vax card. Your Pfizer. Let's okay. Um, uh, late night. Yeah, late night in the fog, guys. Late night in the fog. Uh, late night with the furf to some people. Uh, led the team in rebounds. Not that anybody's counting, but He's tall, uh, <laughs> tall guy. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a tall guy. Like I don't think people know this about him. He's awesome. Well, I mean, I don't think people know they do list. They do list their height. Yeah, but like they haven't seen him yet. You know what I mean? Like it's just like the Australian kid. He's white, kind of goofy. Like no, he's he's tall. He's a tall guy, and he's getting got a little bit of Josh Giddy in his game. Got a little bit of Patty Mills. A little bit of Andrew Bogut. I don't Um, don't think he's done growing. He's just yeah. They make him different. They make him different down under. Uh, But I think the real 
The real takeaway from Late Night in the Fog, contentious debate last week between Mike and I as to whether or not Flo Rida was a a good musical guest to have. I will say this, just the visuals of him shirtless, greasy, sweaty, like hyping up Tony's like Flo Rida, right? Like I've been international vindicated. music artist. Just like hyping up former Kansas running back Tony Sands for going into the Kansas football ring of honor. Love that. Is up there. I'm not saying it's number one. It's up there for the funniest things to have ever happened inside that building. Like if you're filling out a bingo card, you just won. You just won with Flo Rida dapping up Tony Sands shirtless on James Naismith Court, the mecca of college basketball. That was an interesting moment. Uh, I, Snoop, probably funnier. Uh, Snoop is like definitely funnier. I I'm a flow yeah. writer guy. I don't know if I'm. I mean, I, listen, I'm a flow writer guy. I mean, well, well now I'm outnumbered. So the amount of hits the flow writer has that people just don't know. They're like, thank uh, you, like, thank you. Th- wait, are you an anti flow writer guy? No, Nick is anti flow. No, I'm, I'm pro flow. You're pro flow. Oh, no. Nick is anti flow. I'm anti flow. How yes, old are you? Firmly. 32. No, See, admit you you're wrong. Like right admit in the, you're wrong. Low. I didn't right I round. didn't like his catch in that song. I didn't like his music when he was when when he was coming out like when he was bringing them out. Catch like, in that song. My, it's bro. just It's just pop music, man. No, like, like, I don't like that type of music. Yeah, but it's like banging. Are you a hipster? You don't, you don't like things that are universally pop? loved. What, what are you listening to right now? Like, what's what do you what have you been listening to? Like, what tomorrow? thoughts like, on Forrest Gump? I haven't really been listening to music. I've been listening to podcasts. I got I got you can oh, see so my Jimmy Hendrix posters music. behind That's me. Why. Got it. So you're hipster. not a music guy. That makes a lot of sense. Actually. No, no. Oh yeah, hipster. Right. Like, because that guy didn't have a bunch of fucking hits. Oh, right. Oh, does Flo Rida not have it on a record? Like, you use a record player? Is that the problem? You haven't. Do you like the movie Forrest Gump? Yes. I'm not a hipster for not liking Flo Rida. And by the way, I had a lot of support online. I had a lot of people come out and say, I'm with Nick. Flo Rida reminds me of an eighth grade like school dance. Well, those are children. You took that low. That is, <laughs> that is low. And in my those house, are that are, in my house, are, <laughs> we don't do that. We turn this right round and we bring it back. And you know what? We I'm put our whistle. boots on. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm just going to whistle. I'm going to whistle my way out of here. You are wrong about this technique. Welcome okay. to the podcast. We just dropped like six Florida's on. Yeah, Kevin, you're musically inclined. Will you write us a podcast intro? Uh, it would not Please. be the first time I've done that. I've done three podcasts. In- but I want you to do it do it to this to the my house, to the tune of my house. Yeah. And then you just say, well, and you, you do the lyrics. You're, you're the pro. I'm not going to tell you how to do so your job. I have, a, I, have a, I have an idea for a song. I, I, I think I shared it with you, too. We don't have to say it yeah. on here, but I need, a, I need a yes, no on this song. I don't know the song. Yeah, you live in California. Nick, Nick do you know the song? I, I'm from yeah, Texas. I'm familiar with it. You don't know I, that song? It's, by the way, least Texas guy ever. Yeah, no kidding. yeah I'm we not a Texas, Texas guy. Wait, wait, wait. I was telling Vern before the pod. I like, forgot Texas. he was from Houston. Go Strauss. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess that's why. My Midwest fan. Go Strauss. Midwest fan. Go to hell. How's that? <gasps> um, is there? <laughs> I'm going to do this song. <laughs> the only other funny moment from late night was um, oh, Siri's talking to me. Uh, the only other funny moment from late night was Bill Self basically threatening to kill the team <laughs> in the middle of the scrimmage. Like never not on Bill Self's competitive coaching side, which is like 99% of him is never not on. He can never shut that off. And he'll say he will sometimes victim like you'd be in the middle of a season and he's not playing a freshman very much. And he'll say, yeah, I, you know, I got to, I got to play him. We just got to play him more. Yeah. Every season we got to play him more. And I'm just like, well, you're in charge of it. So like, (laughs) you know, if you want to do it, then I'd say, just do it. And then, you know, they'll start him and that guy, or they'll bring him in and he'll miss one fucking defensive assignment and Bill Self's pulling him out, chewing him out, beat red. And he's like, you can't, he cannot turn it off. Like, even if he's like, we got to get these guys some more run. 
it doesn't matter when he's in the moment, he's in it and there's no getting out of it. So it's good to see that he's, uh, he's still got that fire in him. He was so mad. It was so unintentionally hilarious to watch, especially if you, I mean, key fans have been around him 20 years. So they knew, they knew what he meant. And then he was hot. Mike, you could hear him tell him to call timeout, chew the team out. And then afterwards, he did say he was going to kill him. <laughs> Wait, what was the exact quote? Oh, it was Christian Brown being like, you're going to kill him tomorrow, right? Or something. And he was like, yeah. Did, do, I you, gotta go. do you want me to read a couple quotes? Yeah. Yes. He said, uh, that is as bad of play as we've ever had for a late night. <laughs> That's just not basketball, guys. <laughs> Self said. I mean, God, I've already had ex players FaceTime me and say, Are you kidding me? It's so Kristen funny. Brown said, I wish I could be in practice on Sunday because you're going to kill them, aren't you? And the answer is yes. Just from a competitive <laughs> standpoint, there wasn't anything out there, you know? There you go. I just like the idea that Bill Self has ranked all he has assessed. It's about as bad as we've ever played for late night. It's just so. Bill, it's perfect. That is a perfect. Like I've never, I don't think I've ever seen good basketball at late night. No, you know, never, not once it, in the history of was, late night. We've seen good basketball. <laughs> never it was really uniquely never. bad. I think it was uniquely never. like we. Are we concerned? Red flag. Ooh, early. Uh oh. Team doesn't care. It's football school. Yep. Getting fat and happy. Um. Okay, the only other thing I wanted to ask you guys about really quickly, uh, Gonzaga to the Big 12. We're all on board with this, right? No. I'm, I'm in. Excuse me? No, I'm not, not interested. Why don't you just want to create a, a super basketball conference? Because we're a football school. I haven't checked Gonzaga's football program recently. Have you seen it? <laughs> They're worse than UCF, pal. What is UCF? What is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida Central. <laughs> He's quick. my double A team. Yeah, I don't know. It feels weird. Uh, this, this all is weird. I don't know. If of course it's weird. I'll come around more to big, it maybe. Right now I say no. I don't want anything to do with it. Weird. More big games equals good in more money for a conference. <laughs> is Gonzaga always going to be good? Are we convinced that Gonzaga is always like they've been good for thirty years? They've been good for a while. I understand. Their fans That's are good too. Why? What you, Kevin, Kevin's been waiting for the other shoe to drop on Gonzaga the last two decades. Yeah, I don't see many championships. <laughs> this can't last. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Uh, I don't like this. It one bit. Can't. What's Gonzaga? Kevin, do math. Big games equal TV money equal good for Kansas. <laughs> well, if big games is all we need, if that's the premise, like is Gonzaga the only target on the map for that? Big games. If all you want is big games. A UConn. Well, name another I like name UConn another better. perennial top like ten UConn. team like UConn that's better. out there looking for a new home. Is is it wrong that I like UConn better than Gonzaga? No, it's not wrong. I don't know if it's wrong. It's just, you know, an opinion. But it's clear that you're you're just spewing this anti Zags rhetoric that <clears throat> I, I didn't know you harbored so much resentment. It's not that I, it, Gonzaga is Gonzaga in their little ass conference in their little spot away over there. That's what I that's what I think of Gonzaga as. Uh, you and just want to keep them. The tournament. You want to keep them down. Wanna, yeah, if they, do your little thing that you do all the time. You play St. Mary's. That you see, listen to the way he's talking. Late at night, I see your St. little Mary's. Thing. Versus Gonzaga, I bet on it. Obviously. I do like that. I do like, like that. Yeah, I, that, Gonzaga, that's San Francisco. Gonzaga yeah. Like yeah. that's that's it. A I thirty point Gonzaga spread. As like, <laughs> ooh, Gonzaga, Oklahoma State. I can't wait for this game. I'm like, what? No, it's weird. I don't, I don't. No, I don't give a shit about Gonzaga versus Oklahoma State. You know what I do give a shit about? Gonzaga versus Kansas every single year. Not, That'd be awesome. We can do a home and home. We can make it. We can play big games. We do. No, because basketball is good for Kansas. Let's go. I'm in. All right. 
I I clearly am on the two to one. But two to one. Gonzaga's in the Big Twelve. Only needs what a seventy five percent vote. And since you're a guest, your vote only counts as half a vote. Can't so. wait for that Gonzaga football game. It's gonna be great. Motion passes. Here come the Hawks. Yeah, we'll probably put fifty on them too. Hey, thanks for coming on, Kevin. This fun, was boys. awesome. Good to see you. This was awesome. Good thank you for you. yeah. Thank you for doing it. It was great to have you, you and your welcome. legal acumen for this special, special show. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't already and you're listening, please subscribe, rate, review wherever you're listening. Go check us out on YouTube, where we always show it all. You'll see the silhouette of Kevin. <laughs> Uh, because he doesn't have great he's lighting. Born in the darkness. I think. He's, oh, there was there yeah, yeah. more lighting. Sorry, first video podcast. A little I don't late. Have a freaking fork in my hand. <laughs> welcome to tw- <laughs> welcome to 2023. Jesus. Yeah, you're allowed to eat on podcasts now. I didn't all right, eat. guys. Uh, all right. Well, now you can go eat. Kevin, thank you. Mike, enjoy your meal. Everybody else, we'll talk to you next you're week. You're welcome. Yeah.